Hey, what's up guys, Salmon here. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to run tests against your Firebase functions and specifically trigger functions locally on your machine using the Firebase emulators, which Firebase offers as part of their Firebase tools. This project, go ahead and set one up. It's free on firebase.com. I'm just gonna show you something that works, something that worked for me and that simplified my flow tremendously especially with Firebase functions, which could, which could get very messy when you're trying to deploy it for a larger project and you have a lot of triggers, a lot of HTTPS uh, endpoints uh, that are triggered by uh, Firebase Cloud functions and whatnot. So here I have a test Firebase emulators project that I just created, and this is a fresh install of Linux uh, Ubuntu 20. Uh, this works for Windows, for Mac, whatever your machine is, you're just gonna have to install the dependencies or the packages that I'm gonna show you here. And there could be a little differences here and there depending on your platform. I'm gonna try to highlight these as we go. Um, it's as easy as reading the docs and uh, checking how to install the specific dependency based on your system. So first of all, in order to be able to emulate your Firebase functions locally, you're going to need to install Node version 8, which is a little bit old because as of now, Node is, I believe, at version 12. So let's take a look at it. So Node.js. Um, this is completely off the script, guys. I don't have these videos scripted or anything. So bear with me if I make mistakes, if I take too long explaining a certain point, I'll do my best with editing. So as you can see, Node is currently at version 12.16, but the version that we need is 8. And this is a common problem when you're working with different packages. Uh, they have different dependencies. And in this specific case, we're looking at working with Node 8. So the best way to do this is to use what's called uh, NVM or Node Version Manager. And this is an application that allows you to run different versions of Node and install several versions of Node on your system and basically fire up the version that you need based on what project you're working on or when basically when you want to run a certain script. So right now I don't have NVM installed and if you don't have it, go ahead and pull it from uh, the NVM package. You'll be able to find it on GitHub just by running a very simple search. Uh, if you're using a Windows machine, there is another package I believe called NVM Windows. Uh, it's very similar the commands are pretty much the same you can use it the same way we're going to use it here uh, go ahead and, and uh, pull it from this repo from github uh, i always advise anyone to go through the docs i mean you can avoid a lot of mistakes if you just scan through these uh, docs real quick before you go ahead and, and pull them this is the original nvm uh, that we that you can i believe you can use for uh, linux and mac uh, systems so to install this, we're going to use the uh, wget command on this machine. And I'm just going to fire up a terminal, paste this in there. I think we're going to have to do this in sudo mode. And, and... All right, so we don't have to do that. It's already downloaded. What we're going to do is we're going to shut down the terminal, open it again, and test if NVM is properly installed by running NVM the dash dash version. You're going to see the version number of NVM that you have installed in your system. So the next thing we're going to want to do is to pull a version of Node that we want to work with. And as I said, for Firebase, we're going to need Node 8. So let's go ahead and look at Node 8 and pull the latest version of that release. So in 8, I think it's at 8.17. Yeah, right there. So with NVM installed, we're going to ask NVM to obtain and install the latest version of Node 8. So uh, what you have to do is just run the command nvm install 8.17. That should take care of everything for you. So once that's done, um, you can go ahead and verify that node is installed and running by running the command node v. And that shows that we have indeed installed node 8.17. And if you already had a, a different version of node installed, or if you want to switch between different versions, uh, just look at the docs of NVM and it can show you how to control and how to change and switch between versions and whatnot. So now that we have node 8, I want to go ahead and get the Firebase tools. Um, let me do that from the in integrated terminal from inside VS Code. Um, I prefer it that way. So uh, from within VS Code, I pulled up the terminal and I'm just going to carry on working from there. Uh, right now what we want to do is we want to pull and install the Firebase tools globally on our system. And the way to do that is to run npm install globally Firebase tools. All right, guys, so that took a while. Um, anyway, once that's done, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a folder. So we're going to go ahead and make a folder called Firebase uh, emulators. Uh, I can't type anymore. Emulators testing. 
and CD into that. And once we're in there, uh, yeah, I forgot something. So what we want to do first is we want to log in to Firebase. And the way to do this, or why we want to do this, is we want to link our credentials from the cloud or the Firebase console and have the machine um, keep a copy of our credentials that are going to be used whenever we initiate a new project. So to do this, we're going to access the Firebase command, which is now available because we just globally installed the package and go Firebase login. Once that's done, it's just going to take care of everything for you. Um, allow Firebase to collect, sure, why not? And uh, it's just going to take you to the uh, sign on page from here. I already have my account logged in. We're just going to authorize the package to get our credentials. And once that's done, you'll find that you're successfully logged in. So uh, we just created a folder called Firebase Emulators Testing, and we're going to init a new project in there that's done by running the command Firebase init in that folder. OK, so next, Firebase is going to ask you what features you'd like to use in this uh, project. And in this case, we're going to be using the Firebase um, database we're going to be using functions and we're going to definitely require the emulators we're going to tell firebase to use an existing project we're not going to create a new product i just created one using the uh, online console we're going to go ahead and choose the uh, project that we want to in it which is test firebase emulators the ones i showed you at the beginning of this video so I got an error here, and I think the reason for this error is because we did not initialize a database from our project. Let's go to the console and go to database, create a new database, and just leave it empty for now. Um, to, to do that, we're just going to create a database from here, and we could just say production mode, test mode. The, the difference is that it's just going to uh, set up these rules for read and write by default if you choose test against production. So in our case, let's just go, sorry, for test mode so that we can have all the rules uh, open for reading and writing, just for now. Um, choose the nearest location that you wanna run your um, cloud database from. All right, so now we have our database. Uh, let's just hit functions and see if we need to do any setup here. I think we do, get started continue all right so nothing really it's just an initialization or something of that sort so let's go ahead and just do this again firebase init we're gonna have to repeat that again so that uh firestore functions and emulators these are the features that we want to initialize this project with we're going to use an existing project let's go ahead and choose the project we want to work with so these are all default values. This is the file for the database rules. Um, it's just asking if you want to make any different namings or if you want to use a different files for these. Let's just keep the defaults for now. The indexes for the database uh, functions. Um, it's going to set up a folder called functions where our uh, index.js is going to live. And that's the file where we're going to write our code or require the code that we want to deploy to the cloud. Um, as for the language that we want to use, I'm going to be using JavaScript. You could use TypeScript as well. And uh, the tool is just going to take care of uh, transpiling that code into JavaScript for you. Um, do you want to use ESLint to catch problem bugs? Sure, why not? So, uh, and now it's going to ask if you want to go ahead and install all the dependencies that uh, it requires. Let's go ahead and say yes. It's just going to pull all the dependencies that it needs from NPM. And I think after that, it's going to ask if we want to uh, install the emulators because the emulators are written in Java and it does require the Java runtime to be on your machine. Right now, I don't have Java installed, so I'm just going to walk you through that real quick as well. And uh, let's consider this video as an environment setup video. I'm going to follow it up with another video where we actually start writing the code, installing Jest and doing all the fun stuff. Here, it's asking now emulator setup. So which Firebase emulators do you want to set up? And what I need to emulate in our case is the functions emulator. We want the Firestore and that's it. Because in our case, we're not gonna be working with the real-time database. We're gonna be using the Firestore database. However, whatever we're gonna see in this video isn't really gonna be much different, except the methods you're gonna be using in case you're uh, working with a real-time database. So go ahead and install that if you need it. For now, we're going to work with these. Which port do you want to use? Let's just go with the default ports for all of these. Would you like to enable the emulator UI? 
Actually, I think that's the new feature. I haven't seen that before. Let's say yes. Which port do you want to use for the emulator? Let's leave it empty. And it's just going to scan for any empty port when we deploy, uh, when we run the command for starting the emulator. Would you like to download the emulators now? Yes, that's what I want to do. So as you can see, it's a .jar file, which is a Java, uh, a Java file. So now within um, VS Code, let's go ahead and just open up our project from here. Uh, where did I create that project? I think that is in there. Yeah. So there, that's my project Firebase emulators testing. I'm just going to open that folder and then we can start working with VS code. So from your root folder, what you can do is run Firebase emulators start. Oops, emulators start. Okay. So just as expected, guys, we did get an error. It says that the emulator has exited because Java is not installed. So if you don't have the Java runtime on your machine, go ahead and look it up. Uh, it should just take you a few minutes to download it and install it on your machine. It's something you can do on Windows, a Mac, a Linux. In my case, I'm running Ubuntu. So what I'm going to do is just uh, use the uh, apt-get or the apt uh, package manager to install OpenJDK. 8 which is the minimum version that you're going to need to get this done and once it's installed no matter what your machine is you want to make sure that if you run the java dash version command in your terminal that it's going to output something similar to this and specifically with a version 8 or above because this is the minimum required version to get the emulators running so uh just go ahead and google jre uh space write your machine your os so mac or windows or whatever and just follow the steps until you get it installed on your machine there's a there's a much tinkering that you need to do it's just going to get itself installed it's going to configure its own paths if that doesn't happen do a little bit of googling i can't cover everything in this video but do drop a comment and i'll try to help you and answer as many questions that i can later on so once that's installed, uh, we're going to go ahead and just run Java version. And as you can see, we can see that the Java version uh, installs 1.8.0. Runtime environment is there. So I think we have everything we need to get the emulators up and running. And it's good to always uh, restart your terminal once you have um, anything that configures paths. You sometimes run into issues if you just install something and you have a terminal window already open. Uh, it does not recognize that command just yet, so it's just shut it down and open it again, and you should be able to verify that you have access to that command. So now that we have Java installed in the machine, let's go ahead and run the emulators once again and see if that works. Alright, so it says starting emulators. We have a small warning in here. It seems that you're running multiple instances. I think that has to do with the previous instance that we attempted to run. However, just ignore that for now. What we see now is that we have two emulators running on two different ports. That is a functions emulator and this is the database Firestore emulator running on 8080. Let's just control click. And this is actually a pretty new feature. I have not been working with this version of the Firebase tools. And I believe the last time I did this, this entire UI was not there. And this is really amazing, guys. I mean, uh, this could allow you to visualize what's happening as you write your code and as you run your tests in terms of, of documents being added or removed or triggers, copying documents over or modifying fields. So this is really, really nice. And obviously I haven't done any preparation before starting this video, but I did not know this existed. So this is pretty amazing. I'm going to try to cover this in, a, in, a, in an annex video, maybe after this one. Keep that in mind. We're going to come back to this later. Um, it's very neat. I didn't know Firebase did this and I really thank the Firebase team for uh, offering this tool because I was surprised when the command line asked me if I wanted to uh, install the UI for the emulator because I I've never seen this before and this is quite interesting. So I'm actually very happy. So. <laughs> So uh, verifying this, this worked. Obviously this URL returned something and we can, let's take a look at the functions as well. Why, why not? And we can see that port 4000 is showing us this UI, which means that these servers and emulators are actually, actually running. So uh, I'd say as far as environment setup goes, this has been a success. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this video up and let's move on to the next part where we actually start writing function codes, start installing the Jest library, 
writing tests, running our code and watching how everything falls in place. Mm-hmm.